So welcome back to the History of Photography. I'm Trish Triumph O'Sullivan, and I'm going to show some illustrations, and we'll just wrap up this lecture really quick, because I want to make sure you guys see all the stuff, and um, remember that photography is the most important and life-changing invention of the 19th century, and right up to the present, um, you know, computers were, wouldn't be where they are without, uh, without photography. You know, Pong was the was the big thing in computers back when they first <laughs> were invented. And we didn't have images on computers at all, right? Pong, there you go, you can see what it's all about. Um, so there's our friend William Henry Fox Talbot um, and uh, Daguerre, and there's a photograph that was taken in the early 1800s there. Um, and we have uh, the processes, right? The calotype by Fox Talbot and the heliograph by actually Neps, not Daguerre. Okay. There's a copy of the uh, the cover of the first book illustrated with photographs, which was published in London in 1844. Kind of a big deal, right? Nobody had used was able to reproduce stuff before then. That's an image that was in it, um, and that kind of shows the tin plate like kind of stuff that they that they did it on. Here's your negative and the positive, right? Created in the camera and then created from the negative. So you can see a transparent negative, the light source, and then it comes out to the positive photograph, right? So the daguerreotype process was pretty complicated and you had to be in a studio to do this. So there was no way that they could do it like out, out anywhere. It had to be in a studio. Um, and here's a, a, a drawing, an illustration of the studio. And you can see here where the, uh, the people are actually using magnifying glasses to look at their images. They're so cool, right? Um, they're so tiny that then and so detailed. Um, and here's the guy sitting in his chair of torture, the daguerreotype uh, photo nerd chair. Um, and that's a basic, a, a pretty common studio there. Um, here we go showing a portrait being taken. There's the uh, there's another version of the uh, the torture <laughs> chair. <laughs> and there's uh, Hill and Adamson. Right. And then we have some other famous people in photography here. We're talking about the uh, portraits, how portraits used to be done before photographs. They were painted, right? Little miniature portraits that you would carry on your person. Um, this one here is actually a pin. Right? And that's a little mini that you would carry like on a chain or something. Right? You can see how they were how they were done. That's that's tiny. You can see how tiny they really were. Nadar, that's the photograph of of uh, Sarah Barnhart, which was world famous. And there she's like wrapped in a curtain. Right? Beautiful woman, right? Um, and Julia Margaret Cameron, right? Pretty amazing woman. Um, she did these photographs that really were were telling about people in a in telling stories in a different way something that nobody had thought of using and then she invented the collodion wet plate right which was much a much simpler process than the daguerreotype right there's matthew brady remember the first person to photograph war um and very shocking at the time right this is the kind of uh, uh, illustration that might have been used in a magazine before photographs and then this is the kind of thing that he was photographing, which was absolutely devastating to most people. They just didn't know what to think about that. Just really, you know, dead bodies laying around, horribly mutilated. Uh, just, uh, just, you know, this was just a, a pretty common in the Civil War. I have Timothy O'Sullivan, who decided that he wanted to romanticize it a little bit more. Um, and so he would take the, the, the dead bodies and pose them. Right, and here's an example of how people would take a photograph of their dead children, right, because they wanted to remember them. Um, these are all photographs of children that have passed, right. And then the first color photograph um, was done by Maxwell in 1861, and that's the first color photograph where uh, the the color was, you know, permanent, right. They had they weren't they were able to fix the color in it, but it was so expensive it was not commonly used until the 1900s okay and then the other big thing that happened in photography was roll film right um, George Eastman from the 
uh, Eastman Kodak Company uh, invented roll film and that opened up photography to everyone. It was such a big deal. Right now, people could take photographs and people became um, historians in their own right. And this changed photography and made it accessible to regular people. Right before this, you had to be pretty rich and educated to take photographs. And after roll film, you people were able to take photographs without having a whole lot of money, right? Anyone could afford one. Um, and it all comes back to this camera obscura. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you speak Spanish, you might have an idea. Camera means room, right? If you think of the word re camera, um, it means bedroom. Well, this means obscura is dark, so dark room. And someone back in the day figured out that if you had a hole in your wall of a dark room, that you could actually get an image on it and it would be upside down, but you could copy it, you could trace it, right? And um, they, and af ever since someone figured this out, everyone wanted to permanently affix an image. And that's where the hunt to make a, a, to make a process, to create a process that would permanently fix an image uh, in the dark room, right? The camera obscura um, came about. And so they actually invented uh, smaller ones and smaller ones. So people, so artists could actually copy uh, what was in nature and take a little box with them and, and be able to do this on their own as out wherever they wanted to. And that ended up being um, a box camera later on. And once photography was invented, um, that was what they were trying to do. They were trying to imitate what was happening in that dark room. And so now we have, you know, a, a single lens reflex camera with roll film or a DSLR that uses a memory card to, um, to, to fix our photographs, right, permanently. Um, and uh, and that's, that's pretty much the history of photography, you guys. And now here we are in the uh, 21st century with cell phones where we can take photographs wherever we go. We have a, a device that not only um, we can talk on and communicate with, but it's, it's a little computer that can do all kinds of calculations and get us um, connected all over the world through the internet and um, texting, and then we can take photographs as well. So we've become historians uh, in this 21st century way that's just amazing. And it all is because of photography. And, and once again, I want to end the, this lecture just saying, imagine a world without photography. We talked about it at the beginning of class, but just let that sink in. What would it be like if we had no more photographs? Yeah, pretty boring. So you guys just remember your, uh, your, your, your being, your part of history right now. You are, you are making history by documenting what's happening in the world um, at this time. And thank you very much. We will see you in class. That's the history of photography.